Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your weekly reading for February 5th to the 11th. This is for Scorpio and Scorpio rising. And we're going to jump right into it. This is a loaded week. Scorpio, I'm actually going to start off with the weekend. I know I, I dropped these uh, 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 readings um, on the Wednesdays before the actual week. So if you are watching this for, you know, uh, before next week, uh, I want you to pay attention to the weekend. For, and I'm talking about February 2nd to the 4th. And this is because it's nice. Mercury sextiling Neptune. And I'm bringing this up because you may feel it throughout the week. Mercury sextiling Neptune is so, so, so nice. Um, very compassionate er energy. Neptune has, you know, there's a lot of spirituality with Neptune and a lot of intuitive energy, uh, a lot of compassion and so I really love this aspect and this is a time where you know Mercury being a planet of communication right um where there's a lot of healing going around with like words and 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 just you know speaking with others that you care about and I I, I you could even get a lot of like intuitive downloads and feel very spiritually active around this time and I'm only bringing this up because uh you uh, Mars will sextile Neptune as well throughout the week so you're gonna really really feel this energy and on the fourth Fourth, Mercury actually does move into Aquarius. So Mercury is exalted in Aquarius. It does really, really, really good in Aquarius. Mercury, the planet of communication, thinking, logic. Now, with it moving into Aquarius for you, Scorpio, that's your fourth house. You, you are definitely going to have a lot of conversations about home okay uh, 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 uh and your you, your vision for that and your future for that uh if not home just your domestic sector so family children a uh, significant other maybe even real estate maybe even talking about real estate but you know mercury and aquarius is very forward thinking it's you know very like having intelligent like conversations very con feeling confidence in 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 the words that you say and and even thinking like having confidence in in your thoughts you could even have some like really fun Fun, like you know quirky conversations if you you know uh th that could be just really nice for you uh but it is very nice and i and i do want you to think um outside the box and a lot of y'all may be thinking outside the outside the box around this time and mercury will be in aquarius for a few weeks now now on monday mercury will conjunct pluto this is intense and big and if you saw your february forecast which is still like my mind is blown uh because there's so much partnership activity happening for y'all uh this is a an intense aspect Aspect on on Monday Mercury conjuncting Pluto so we're kicking it off in this explosive like there's so much power in words and there is this level of depth that comes with Pluto and you would know best because Pluto is your ruling planet and Scorpios are known to have that intensity about them but also that you know depth about them and even like uh like intimacy is associated with you know Scorpio as, as well so again even the way that you think like so now remember Mercury being an Aquarius like really like maybe even having like really deep conversations and uh, uh thinking really deeply around this time but remember this is an aspect I want you to take advantage of. It's so powerful. There could be some secrets being uncovered, some truths being uncovered. You know, we're talking about Pluto here when I talk about that depth, like really, really going deep. So think about this because this is the only time we're going to have Mercury conjuncting Pluto this year. Okay. So use it if you need to have conversations or if you need to like think about something a little bit like deeply, like around this time. Now on the seventh Venus trines Uranus, absolutely amazing. Okay. So this is really great. This is really great. I love this day. I love this day because the same day Mars is going to sextile Neptune. Now, before we even get to that, Venus, the planet of love, the planet of uh, uh, romance and even like money. OK, and beauty. Venus rep represents a lot of things. Creativity. I mean, those are things that are just going to be this is a very auspicious aspect. Now, Venus will be trining Uranus, which is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So yes, this will be a very romantic day for a lot of y'all. If you are single, you better go out there. This is a day where you can, this is, uh, things can happen, okay? Uh, this is also, uh, you know, remember I said Venus is creativity. So there could be something, you know, just looking at everything here, there could be something that something new that you're interested in, maybe even curious and something, uh, doing something around this time, especially in relationships. Like if you go out and eat Italian every night, maybe, you know, the next night you, you eat like food from, uh, you know, 
Neptune, whatever, like you do you, right? But think of like matters of the heart. You're definitely going to feel like really moved around this time. Uh, again, this can be creativity. It can be around money matters as well. Uh, if you are here for career, seventh house, you know, when I say partnerships, that can be career related as well. Just one-on-one -on -one relationships. Just remember, this is a great day because Mars will sextile Neptune this day as well. So again, a lot of that spirituality energy, there could be this moment that you have with a partner too uh, about out like um you know um feeling like this is you've got a good hand, handle of like your sense of like your higher purpose like this is that day you may feel it like deep down in your bones down to your soul this is a lot of spiritual energy and yes a lot of love and sex energy too especially with what's happening for y'all for sure uh but in it is like you know uh i've been saying like this is the kind like a kind of one of those days where you can look into someone's eyes and see deep down into their soul i mean this is like really really and we didn't even have mars sex on neptune last year and so really really take advantage of this this is having the same day venus trines Uranus. Now, on the 8th, the sun squares Uranus. So if you, you know, saw the your February forecast, I talked about this. This is when things start building up in a way where it's just like, ah, there's, you know, it may feel like a wall that you have to break through, but you know, every, it's going to resonate differently for every Scorpio. Every Scorpio is going to feel it differently. You all have different rising signs. Y'all have different, you know, birth charts. That's what makes you different from every Scorpio out there. And so uh, for some of y'all, you could feel like a one out of 10. Some, you know, maybe like a four or five out of 10. Just remember it is in your seventh house, okay? Uranus is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So there could be something there that may be unexpected. Remember, Uranus is all about breakthroughs, innovation, but also the unexpected, surprising shifts and whatnot. And the reason why I'm harping on this is because now we come to the new moon in Aquarius on Friday. Okay, so this is happening the day after. Remember, sun squaring Uranus. Uranus is your uh, Aquarius's ruling planet. All right, so a, a modern ruler. So uh, this definitely is uh, when there could be something new. You know, new moons bring new cycles and new beginnings and whatnot. So, but there could be something new that arises around this time where it's just like, uh, what? And it can have to do with home matters, family matters. Remember, all this energy in Aquarius is in your fourth house or domestic sector, uh, real estate matters. So there could be something just, you know, just keep an eye out for. I'm not saying anything like really challenging is going to happen, but there could definitely be something that you just didn't expect. And now you're like, OK, this is what he was talking about. This is what Jimmy was talking about, about that wall. This is OK. Like, well, yeah, let me pivot now. Um, now, on the 10th, Mercury will square Jupiter. Again, this has to do with partnerships and relationships for y'all. OK, Jupiter is in Taurus in your in, in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So uh, there could be, you know, you know, with Mercury and Aquarius expanding, you're thinking about like things in, in terms of like your future, but also like very inventive having a lot of different new ideas happening in your head uh this is just a day where you know jupiter is expansion so but it is a square so it's just a good time to focus on you know just the fine the fine print <laughs> if that makes sense focus on the things that are important basically uh so yeah this is a week this is a week um literally uh but let's get started okay scorpio let's see what's going on for you i love that venus trine uranus for you i absolutely love it. i love a lot of these days for you let's see what's going on for you scorpio for the week of february 5th to the 11th again for scorpio and scorpio rising if you do want to read for your moon and your venus all those other uh placements if you do know your birth chart you are absolutely welcome to venus is very active this week and we do have a new moon in aquarius so with that said scorpio let's do it february 5th to the 11th now scorpio you know what's really funny by the way scorpio i was thinking earlier you know how uh leonardo dicaprio is a scorpio do you think people call him Leonardo Di Scorpio? Too much? Uh, I'll stop. I'll stop. Uh, Scorpio. Oh, wow. Look at you go. Wow. You are definitely going to have uh, a lot of things going on. Let's just keep it that way. You do have to uh, uh, spend some time 
thinking about something. There is going to be something happening where I do want you to spend some time really thinking about it. And there may be something that uh, it, well, let's just get started. You got the King of Pentacles. Okay. Uh, um, I'm not going to refer back to your February forecast because I know at this point, a lot of y'all are still like, uh, you haven't watched it yet, but, uh, King of Pentacles in your past. There you go. I absolutely love this for you. As you know, King of Pentacles is Taurus. All right. So, uh, you can even see the symbol of Taurus all over his throne, the bulls here. Uh, but, uh, and again, that's your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So there is a sense of wealth and feeling good good and there's this uh abundance around it okay and so uh if if that does not resonate for you there is still just this sense of like feeling on top of things feeling like in your uh in your world within your orbit yeah i have control things are great for me uh i i i this is a, a time where i'm in this place where if i think about where i was like a year ago a year and a half ago like i'm very proud of myself for being here okay he does hold that golden scepter. I love that. But the other thing is, look at his other hand on top of the pentacle, owning his wealth. So I absolutely love this for you. And again, this is just really, really, really nice. Um, you, I mean, there's so much abundance here. I mean, as you can't even distinguish the harvest from his like robe. Um, now, speaking of abundance, you got the emphasis. Now, Scorpio, I feel like this has happened many times for y'all i pointed out earlier he holds the golden scepter that golden scepter creates all this abundance all this wealth all this you know richness in his life it's it, it, it's uh, it's really 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 nice and he's one of only two people in tarot that hold that golden scepter and you just got them both you just got them both so you're good uh, hello. Hi, you're good. You're going to have to get out of your head a little bit. There may be some competition going on too, but you're good. Um, looking at everything else that's happening here. Uh, so you got the empress in the heart of your spread in the heart of your spread. I, you heard that right in the heart of your spread really really nice here uh because remember venus is very active this week and you're going to see venus being very active next week as well uh venus here you even see the symbol of Venus right here in her stone-shaped heart. Uh, the Empress is a goddess. Let me remind you, a goddess, not a priestess, not a queen, a goddess. Okay, so think Aphrodite. So a lot of luxuriating, a lot of like abundance, a lot of wealth, a lot of like even like, um, you know, there is this maternal quality to uh, the Empress, which is really, really nice, especially when you think about um a lot of things that are happening for you in terms of home, right? Neptune being in Pisces in your fifth house. Remember I said Neptune's very active this week. Saturn is there too. So there is a sense of, and your fifth house is pleasure and love and romance and family and children and, and creativity and, and, and procreation too. She's pregnant, by the way, so some of y'all could, you know, uh, have baby energy going around this week. But even still, and if it's not you, like someone that you know, there's just this presence about it, uh, especially with her being the heart of your spread. But even still, there is this sense of like your soul just glorified this week. Remember, I said this is like a, a week of like soul seeking, soul searching, soul like feeling uh, like the depth of your soul, like just so nice. You're definitely going to feel it. You're definitely going to feel it. Can you go out into nature this week and do something like um, like put your hand on a tree? OK, I want you to connect with nature, especially with the empress coming up in the heart of your spread. Some of y'all just might actually some of y'all just may do that. You may feel compelled to do that. Uh, but this is just really nice. So this is like just this free flow of abundance. And remember said there is like a maternal quality to the empress, but there's also this, you know, sensual quality and you know sexual quality especially with venus right have you know representing all those things that you know venus represents but even still this is really nice you got the two golden scepters you're you're good now you did get the eight of wands in your challenge area so there is uh it seems like actually um when i look at what's happening uh some of y'all okay so some of y'all may feel this week uh 
things are not happening fast enough. I feel like you may be distracted, though, with a lot of the great things that are happening in your life. Like there is going to be this level of like a lot of like outpouring of love and 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 even creativity. If you're working on like a passion project and you're, it's just like you're you're really going to feel that energy. Um, so I'm not even feeling the it one strongly. The other thing is that there is a sense that uh, some of y'all may be thinking that some things could be moving too fast. Uh, and it could be because you are in this place of like, uh, what does this say? Like, like butterflies and stuff, or just feeling like, uh, you know, uh, on this roller coaster of, 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 of love and passion and whatnot. But in any case, uh, there is a sense of like the timing of things. Like there could be a little bit of like, you know, like frustration, like the, why hasn't this happened yet? And you know, that is the key word yet though. All right. So it's yet something, things are happening for you for sure, for sure. And so just know that just hold on to like your intuitive energy, stay your authentic self. Don't let like the smaller things that it, you know, don't let those things, uh, you know, especially low energy frequencies, like kind of like be that blockage. And again, with sun squaring Uranus, that may be that build up for you, but uh, like as if maybe you're waiting for a proposal or waiting to like, you know, if you're dating someone, now you're ready to go steady and you're waiting, you know, but it's not happening fast enough. So even still, again, that if you're not here for love, it can be career. It can be even friendship could be a thing too as well. Like there could be some activity there, but you did get the five of wands in your crown. Now, five of wands being, a uh, uh, a challenge card, a conflict card. It is in your crown. So there is something this week you may be thinking about that has this competitive uh, flair to it. Uh, and it doesn't even seem like, you know, with the fact that the sun... Okay, so... Uh, uh, um, with... Okay, so... With Saturn and Neptune in Pisces in your fifth house, <laughs> uh, there could be something there where you feel like uh, there's something like um, uh, that could be, again, matters of love, matter matters of just what brings you pleasure, okay, at the end of the day with all that, you know, empress in the heart of your spread. There could be something there where there is a little bit of like, uh, that could be that sun square Uranus thing where it's like something that comes out competitively uh, and it feels like it's not. Uh, so it could be that. Let's say, for instance, you are single. You are not the only person swiping right on someone on Tinder if you're on Tinder or whatnot. Right. Like there's that kind of like competitive competition uh and uh, same thing with like a job if you're if you're looking for a new job or job hunting like you're not the only one sending a resume or whatnot so that is like the biggest kind of like competition that i feel this week where it may j just don't let it stress you out that's the only thing uh the other thing is like yeah there could be some things with your actual uh family and children where there is a little bit of like Hmm, like maybe like some people not seeing eye to eye. So just be mindful of that. At the end of the day, this is it's just kids swinging their wands in the air. So uh, a lot of like ego at play. And so there is a sense of like, it's not even worth your child. <laughs> Wait, time because it's children at play. What the, did I just say? Is that even worth your child? This is so basically it's children swinging their wands child's play so not worth your time that's what i'm trying to say scorpio why are you, you you make me laugh you make me laugh you also got the ace of pentacles okay you got the ace of pentacles and the root of your spread this is absolutely amazing i mean you have abundance abundance you have the king of pentacles the ace of pentacles uh so there is a sense of like something new brewing in your life that is making you feel more grounded making you feel uh and this week this week you will feel it all right this week uh and it could be like uh even like this uh ascension in an area of your life uh and yes there could be some money and 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 uh, money related matters involved as well for sure with 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 the king of pentacles with the empress with the ace of pentacles uh but there is this new it's almost like you're seeking it too 
uh, this new chapter, okay? This new, uh, uh, you know, with it being the new moon this week, there is going to be this new cycle, right? And so uh, there is this sense of like you really wanting something new as well. But again, in a way that it's almost like grounding you. Remember all this energy in Aquarius and the new moon in Aquarius in your domestic sector, right? And in, in, in the, you know, the, the foundations of your life. And so it can be with a relationship. It can be with, you know, a home related matter. It can be uh, even like moving. Yeah, a lot of y'all could be moving for real. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you're moving in with uh, someone else or a partner or, you know, because remember, you have all that activity in your seventh house. Now you have the two of swords as well in your future. And so really trust your intuition at this point. Okay. Really just be like your authentic self is what's coming out. Uh, but uh, it with the two of swords, yeah, this is you taking that time to just really like, I need, I need to just think about things and I'm going to do it to the point where I'm comfortable taking this blindfold off. Okay. But trusting your intuition as you do. So you see the sliver of the moon in the background. So keep that in mind. This is really interesting to me. Okay. Because this card is attributed to moon and Libra. All right. And so a Libra rules partnerships and relationships, right? The house of partnerships and relationships is the native ruler of that. So there could be something, a decision about partnerships and relationships, not in a bad way, just in a way where you're like, okay, I need to, I'm processing things. Mercury moved into Aquarius for me. I'm thinking, you know, four steps ahead now. I'm thinking, you know, one year plan, five year plan, 10 year plan, things like that, things like that. The other thing is Libra actually rules your 12th house. So your subconscious. So even like think and intuition. And uh, so it, there is that like alignment with what's happening astrologically too. spend that time really going deep. Okay. And really, again, to the point where you're comfortable taking that blindfold off. Let's get to your staff. Scorpio, you're funny. You're funny. You make me laugh. Scorpio, if you like this reading, by the way, it'd be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments, let me know what's going on. Can you believe next month is like when we have daylight savings? Isn't that crazy? You're going to start seeing um, light in my uh, 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 apartment now. And if you are a subscriber, um, thanks so much for being here. Y'all are amazing. I wouldn't be here without you. So I am truly grateful. I really do appreciate it. Scorpio, look at you. Look at you go. You are definitely going to make some... It's almost like there is this transition happening for you, but you're going to just feel good this week. Um, you're going to feel good. I do want you to really, um, well, if I may, Scorpio, I want you to be a little Scorpionic this week, okay? Uh, the reason I say that uh, is if you look at your entire spread here, your entire spread. You didn't get any cups. You didn't get any cups. All right. Cups, water. You're a water sign. Cups, emotions. Okay. Feelings and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, so really, really, uh, and intuition as well. But uh, so, uh, you know, uh, but it really, really open up. And it seems like you will, it, you know, especially with the Empress, but I want you to do it in a way where it's, a lot of everything's aligned right mind body spirit every all of it okay but put put some heart into it you got the three of swords okay you got the three of swords three of swords where it shows up in your staff though this is just saying that there is it's like almost like secretly there's something that uh you uh Remember this week, all those Pluto, uh, well, Pluto being very active this week, you're going to see Pluto being very active next week as well. Uh, and remember, Pluto has that depth to it and like secrets and whatnot. So Uranus also bringing surprises and the unexpected. It's almost like this week there could be something where you are feeling a little bit of like, OK, so what's what's going on? There's 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 uh, something maybe hard and challenging, like I said, that comes up unexpectedly. But it with the three of swords. I want to show you something here. It is what we call like the heartbreak card, right? However, it is still a sword suit it's happening up here. All right. So remember, you're going to have to make um, some sort of decision where uh, or spend some time. OK, even if, if it's not a decision, it is spending time with yourself to clear your mind, to really, really uh, 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 feel in your comfort zone okay um that's 
really going to make all the difference. You see, you've gone from like the two of swords to the three of swords, but this is really, again, just where it, it, it falls in your spread. It's almost like, it's like my duty to tell you that sure you can see that there it's like storming and it's rainy. And so you can see this as like when it rains, it pours, or you can see it as in like, after every rainstorm, there is a rainbow. So it, it really is about your mindset. Remember, it is the sword suit, okay? What's going on up here? Now, you did get the chariot and your external factors area. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You know, it does feel like there is, like, you have, like, um, you have, like, uh, like a partner in crime, okay? Uh, someone that's really going to, like, uh, uh, be that support system. Someone that kind of, like, inspires you this week, too, as well. It's a really nice feeling, all right? It's a really nice feeling. And the chariot is all about moving forward, leaving obstacles behind, going past obstacles or, or any challenges. So very nice here. And, and, again, there is a sense of newness. There is a sense of newness. Um, especially with, you know, the three of, of, of um, the three of the Empress and the hardier spread being card three. Okay. Oh my gosh. How many goof ups have, have, let me count. That's like six. So the Empress being card three, three is about birth and creation, the birth of new things. It is growth, advancement, development, maturation, all of that as well. But with the Ace of Pentacles here as well, I'm going to show you something here. You see the chariot not holding any reins, right? How is he controlling those sphinxes up here? So again, a lot of this is like you being in your mind. There's going to be something like almost like uh, uh, something's going to propel you forward to, to switch. It's like switch things over where you are. You have this powerful mindset. Okay. Secondly, look at what he is holding. He is holding the magician's baton from the magician card okay and so this is all about willpower too and so uh magician card card one so that new beginning that new beginning this new beginning there is this newness all right that's happening for you now you have the two ones okay so very interesting i like that you got the two ones because it is almost like Again, for some of y'all, remember what I said earlier, some of y'all may feel that things are not happening fast enough. Some things you may feel are happening too fast, okay? But it really is the former that I feel the most. But with the two of wands here, it is great because it seems like there is a sense of like you just still want to plan, okay? So don't rush into things and, you know... Remember, it's all about that comfort level for you, really knowing like deep down in your bones, this is right. And then lastly, you got the seven of pentacles, okay? And your final outcome. So this is, uh, you know, be, uh, first of all, just be very proud of yourself, okay? Like I said earlier, from the very beginning, when, I, when you got the king of pentacles, uh, almost like being proud of like being where you are now compared to like where you were like a year ago, a like, year and a half ago, two years ago or whatnot. And so be very proud of like where you are now. But again, there is this sense of like, you know, there's a lot of things that you've invested in at this point. It can be a relationship. It can be a career. It can be, you know, uh, whatever resonates with you, right? Something that you've just put a lot of effort into, okay? A lot of like blood, sweat, and tears. And so this week you may have like a little bit of a pause and that's what you need the two of swords here okay and your future just have that pause just to and i'm not saying like you know ending something beginnings i just have that pause and just reflect that's what you're gonna that's but it's gonna make a big difference and you're gonna feel that okay uh and it could be a time where you may ask yourself like whatever i've invested in and it could literally be investments by the way i'm it, i mean it is pentacles um like stock mar market stuff uh it, it you ask yourself do I want to keep moving forward with this? If I do, how do I ascend in that area? Uh, what is going to make it worth me, uh, worth it, uh, uh, keeping going with this? Um, and again, it's not, I'm not saying anything that you're in right now is wrong or anything like that. Just having this pause to give a lot more thought to plan the rest of, 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 you know, like this long-term plan. Right. Um, and then if you do feel like you're in a situation where you're just like, okay, I've invested, you know, a lot of time in, you know, my job, I've been at my job for five years now, 
Now I'm going to take that pause because now I am trusting my intuition and now I really believe it's time for a promotion. It's time to have a new job title. It is time to start my own business because I have all that knowledge. So again, remember, it's just taking that pause so you can let your intuition guide you. Okay, Scorpio, you're amazing. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Did you love that Leonardo DiCaprio joke? Did I... Did no, I lost you on that one. Anyway, next week, Scorpio, we have busy, busy week. We have Mars moving into Aquarius, uh, and Venus. We have Venus conjuncting Pluto. We have Mars conjuncting Pluto. Oh my goodness, that one's gonna be a big one for you. I mean, that's Mars, your traditional ruler conjuncting Pluto, your modern ruler. We'll talk about it next week. Thanks so much, Scorpio. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.